To find the volume of the shape, what we've done is we've taken the cross-sectional area of that shape, found the formula for that, and then integrated that area dx from a to b. However, let's look at another kind of solid. This kind of solid we can make by rotating a function around either the x-axis or the y-axis. For instance, this vase could have been made on a lathe, and it could be described by a function on its outside shape. It could have been rotated around that x-axis. And then to find the volume, we could do the same thing that we've done in the past. So how do we find a volume like this? Well, what's very nice about this is the cross-sectional area is a circle. If we take that function, and I just have a function here, x squared minus 4x plus 5, if I rotate that function around the x-axis, it gets this shape on the right-hand side. And you'll notice the cross-sectional area of that shape is a circle. Circles are pretty nice because we know the area of that circle. So the shape is a circle. The next thing we need to do is find the formula of that circle. Well, not only is it nice that the area is a circle, but we also know that the radius is always going to be the function that we're using to generate the shape. So always, if we're dealing with a cross-section of a solid that's caused by a function rotated around, in this case we're talking about the x-axis, the area is always going to be pi r squared or pi times f of x squared, because f of x is our radius. In this case, we have that the area is equal to pi times x squared minus 4x plus 5 all squared. So now what do we do? Just like we've done before, step three, we integrate. I wrote this out mainly because students are really good at foiling, right? T multiplying a binomial times a binomial. A trinomial times a trinomial, sometimes students don't remember how to do that. But it really is nothing more than FOIL. You take that first term, the x squared, and you multiply it times each of the terms of the second factor. So it's x squared times x squared, x squared times negative 4x, x squared times positive 5. Then you go to the second term, negative 4 x, negative 4 x times x squared, negative 4 x times negative 4 x, and so on. And it's kind of a crazy thing with all the arrows, but you'll do the same thing with the 5. The 5 will multiply each one of those terms. So you end up with a total of 9 terms. Then we simply combine like terms, and then from here it's pretty straightforward. And the volume of this shape is 78 over 5 pi, and that will be units cubed, since this is a volume. We generalize this to calling this the disk method. If I have a function rotated around the x-axis or the y-axis, then that area function, that a of x, is always going to be pi times the function squared, because it's always going to be a circle, and the radius is always going to be the function. So, if I have something rotated around the x-axis, it will be, from a to b, the integral of pi times fx squared dx. If I'm rotating around the y-axis, then I go from c to d. Again, there's no reason why we call it c and d instead of a and b, except to keep it straight when we're looking at these formulas. c to d, pi of gy squared dy. That's all there is to it. So really, the disk method is nothing more than a specialized, easier form of the general slicing method. Next, we're going to talk about the washer method. Well, all a washer is is a disk with the center cut out of it. So this is what you're going to use when the shape is not a solid. It's a rotation with a cavity inside. So really, this is what that vase would have had. So if you have a function f of x and a function g of x, we've got this little rectangle here. And when we rotate this around the x-axis, we'll get a washer. Just like before we got a disk, now we have a washer. It's just a disk with a hole in it. If we spun this around from 1 to 4, the shape would look like this. From here, it's a very simple step. The volume of this shape is simply going to be the integral from a to b of pi times 
the difference between the two radii squared. That is, f of x squared minus g of x squared, all in terms of dx. Compared to the general slicing method, the washer and the disk method are very straightforward because they're always circles. They'll always use this function. And the toughest thing you'll have to decide is if it's over x or rotated around y.